Hello, as you already know, we started off in 1980, and very quickly we had some pretty high praise from the technical press, including this article by Popular Science Magazine, where it was being hailed as one of the few high-tech housing concepts in the entire world, along with a handful in Sweden and Japan. In 1982, we already had very good mastery of the machinery, the techniques to make these injected panels. We had a truly modern housing system with a great air distribution, a very tight shell, and one of the strongest advertised hurricane-resistive house in the world. Very soon our crews were called to erect houses all over the world, including in trade shows, where we quickly captured the imagination of the regular press and newspapers. Orders came from all over. As expected, naturally, this concept attracted the interest of developers who uh, soon we had ski resorts we were building with 40 to 80 units, and those were very popular. Uh, this is a ski and ski out resort in southern Quebec where the skier can actually go under the house up to his front door. These were very tight, well built, highly energy efficient and soundproof. And very quickly, our name was on the map, in Canada at least. It didn't, it didn't take long for us to f drop down to the tropics where the beach resort developers were found an interest. So in the Dutch Antilles, uh, we started to build uh, large uh, resorts and those again were very popular for the same reason. Uh, they needed air conditioning, they needed comfort for the American uh, public and we had all that. And plus we, can, we could erect these uh, units very quickly and for a low cost. The amount of luxury depended on what the uh, owner wanted to put into it but the basic shell cost was in, back in 1983 was $19,000 for one unit and we were talking about a thousand square foot unit. After all, the qualities that we needed in the tropics were pretty much the same qualities as we had already developed in, in the Canadian Arctic. In both cases, you needed high insulation, weather tightness, extreme rigidity, capacity to absorb a lot of wind and all kinds of stresses, weather or otherwise. And we had already proven all that in Canada and starting to sell in the US too. In the mid-90s, our Canadian technology was already set up in a plant in New Mexico, selling to the, the U.S. Rockies. We did a ski resort in Pajarito Mountain and several buildings involving this, these new technologies. This is when we learned to adapt to uh, desertic and uh, extreme environments where AC uh, needs to be performed beautifully. Arizona was our first destination and instead of being able to air condition a single room like some retirees could afford, we could insulate the entire house and air condition the entire house for the same price. Our proverbial wind resistance uh, due to shape, uh, the fact that we have no sharp corners, we have a shell with very low drag, close to a sphere basically, uh, was soon to be proven. Although we had a guaranteed hurricane resistance, we had never had uh, anything more serious than a force tree at that time. The chance was provided to us in 1995, after we had built a plant in Louisiana and, and another one in, in Florida. Uh, uh, f these houses uh, were only damaged, uh, the only damage on these houses were the balcony uh, plastic uh, enclosures, the railings. Uh, everything else resisted beautifully and we're talking about the hurricane of force 5 which hit St. Martin in the Caribbean with winds of 280 miles, miles an hour and battered, battered the entire island for 14 hours straight. It was a total uh, miracle and we have been on the map for a hurricane proof house ever since. In the year 2000, we had a lot of units by the water and we made a study to see what kind of resistance we would get for from tsunamis <clears throat> who create a water rise that's up to 50 feet. In some cases, mo most of the time it's limited to 15 to 20 feet on the water shore. Our conclusion is that it didn't take much to make them tsunami resistant. We had the height already and the water penetration of the lower levels without damage was the thing to uh, consider. Uh, following the Hawaiian Hilo protocol in which if the water can go through the uh, columns without uh, stressing the entire house, uh, you're okay and the uh, higher levels provide a safety exit for most people. Even standing on the balcony would save your life. So in 2005 we felt the need to adapt to different cultural idioms. Uh, we had to do a project in Vietnam, uh, one in northern China, and they were, we needed to adapt and be able to use local skills and talent in order to be able to fit in with the local construction. Also we needed to get away from the stealth models and concentrate on the higher need for low slab based models. We already had developed some very modern concrete delivery systems uh, which are now available in most countries and we had modernized many aspects of our system to make it uh, truly capable of adapting to the new millennium.
we still needed to improve on the column systems to make it cheaper. And since then, we have been developing several uh, patents, which we cannot divulge because of the patent law. Not yet, anyway. But still, uh, the following slides will show you where we're going with that. These are earlier versions of cheaper systems to build elevated construction without spending a fortune by using molds and different things. They all provide a, ca a cavity under the floor where you can store different things. This is a cavity that speeds, speeds up uh, access and distribution of utilities uh, where you can put heat storage material like eutectic salts and so on and so forth where you can always uh, uh, retrofit systems. Truly a modern concept. We were and we still are looking for uh, <clears throat> medium height development structure for resorts and also for public housing. But basically the scope of this uh, short movie you're going to see is uh, the house on a slab. The simple, groupable, expandable, expandable in four directions I should add, including upwards, uh, concept with our panel system. We have done something to make the price come down drastically. And here's the purpose of our talk here. We all agree that the world needs uh, energy efficient, permanent, uh, charming, easily assembled houses, and that our Canadian techniques tested abroad respond to that call very well. The final synthesis, the one we call Archimedes tree, is occurring right now in Mexico as we are speaking, and it involves the following keywords price strength, modularity, ease of assembly by low-skill crews, exportability, high thermal efficiency, resistance to earthquake hurricanes, and sustainability. We just cannot wait to show you all the exciting models that we have in the works. This will happen very quickly as our production facilities are being set up right now. <clears throat> Here's why. Obviously, when you have a triangular structure, you have a lot more strength to develop than when you have a parallel structure like the one on the right. So we use a, a panel, which in its core has a complete triangular structure of a 12-gauge wire. And this structure gives strength to the wall, resistance to lateral loads like winds and earthquake loads. When finished with the proper concrete uh, um, veneer on each side, it forms an incredible wall with a good uh, insulation properties, but also incredible structural strength. Coming up in different thicknesses, this technology, which was purchased by a Mexican businessman from an American patent 20 years ago, is rapidly catching all over the world. It is both inexpensive and, and quite fast. The structural results are just outstanding, but there are quite a number of inconveniences. First of all, it's a highly engineered system by which the positioning of the different steel reinforcing element is critical. Let's look at the typical application that's done in the site. We try to do everything within um, the factory, so to avoid a lot of these operations. The easiest one, of course, is to position the elements. They're very light in weight, and once you sl slip them over their vertical uh, rebars, it's quite simple to just tie them together with using pliers and twist wires. They need to be, re they need to be attached to each other by joining elements, which are small grids, which needs to be <clears throat> tied in and uh, wire wrapped. Uh, this part can be pretty tedious. There's quite a lot of those to install, like this corner piece. We try to make as much as possible at the factory so you don't have to do them at the site. So basically what we do is ship a much larger panel containing the windows and doors most of the time and all the connecting elements. Some of these operations are dangerous. Like for instance, cutting these panels with a high-speed saw <clears throat> in the field can cause accidents, especially if you use a low-skilled crew or young people not used to mechanized tools. <clears throat> This is why, uh, by doing everything at the factory like we do, we uh, suppress all these dangerous jobs. Uh, some of them involve positioning of precise elements at precise positions to develop the structural strength, like this header. This would be done at the factory within a jig that's very precise. Same as the positioning of this stop bar, which requires um, <clears throat> some skill. Now, a lot of these connectors uh, require small pieces of armature, which needs to be uh, inserted. Uh, as you can see, these little vertical bars are inserted in melted areas. Now, to melt those uh, throff, you need to use a torch. And uh, using a torch, uh, it can be dangerous. It can set fires, and a lot of people not experimented with could burn themselves. So this is done at the plant again. The wiring, the uh, tubing, the plumbing material, pipes, all done at the factory. From precise jigs and from precise sub-assemblies. <clears throat> by doing it this way, we multiply the speed of erection by a factor of 10. 
and the control environment of a factory makes for very precise assemblies which you cannot always get at the site. Same goes for ceilings. The ceiling panels have to be held temporarily by shoring. These are vertical posts and, and these are costly and sometimes not available on faraway sites. When we export our housing system, we use a technique by which most of these uh, roofing timbers are part of the final structures, forming great good looking timbers. This is an end wall. It's done with, with a torch. You have to burn into the foam and then put cement with a rebar. Again, this is done at the factory. Now this part is done at the building site. You need to keep that stuff wet for a few days. And eventually, what we do, we take a very good technology and we combine it with a Canadian prefabrication technique and we have pretty much a perfect system. One that can weather all kinds of uh, extremes. Uh, environmental conditions like heat and coal, uh, earthquake. We can take a lot of actual and lateral loads of different types. We can take high wind loads, hurricanes. And also, most of these houses could stand severe flooding, even tsunami conditions, as was shown with the late, recent tsunami in Indo Indonesia. We can take a lot of abuse. We have a system that's non-corrodible, will resist insect, can be assembled by a low-grade, low-skill crew very quickly, does not require a whole lot of technical support or, if you wish, technical superintendence at the, uh, at the site. It uh, uses local materials like concrete, which are readily available in all countries of the world, and gives a final product that is truly permanent, yet fully green in the sense that it requires much less uh, energy to cool or to heat in wintertime, and yet provides a very attractive house that is not a prefab job, as we say, but a fully permanent house done with prefab techniques. Thank you very much. In a future video, we will show you uh, photos of our assemblies. Uh, we are still uh, seeking patents and we cannot show a lot of confidential material within this video. Thank you for your patience and please come back. Thank you.